How's it going up there? Is uh, you've been having a hot summer too, like all of us? Oh yeah, it's been brutal. Yeah, all over. You know, you can't get away. I don't know where you go to to beat this heat. It's been just absolutely brutal. Every summer here in Atlanta, it's the humidity is just insane, and it's just worse this year. So. Absolutely, the South. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna expect it every year, but uh, yeah, where you are, I mean, you can get hot, but it doesn't last as long. It's hot, but it's dry heat. Yeah, that is a big difference. I'll tell you, I go out running in the morning and the, the humidity just is a killer. But if it's dry, like it was maybe about two months ago, it's yeah. a big difference, even if it was warm. Absolutely. Yeah, and it's a Rocky Mountain High. So you uh, grew up in, in that area? Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. Um, Are we kicking off? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. <laughs> um yeah, it's free form this is jazz so i just like i just I, I like to start recording intros for this thing too but it's like i don't know if i have much of a life to say very much before all this so yeah i should do yeah that. no i i uh i grew up here more or less i'm actually originally from maine oh cool and, wow. and uh i moved out here as a kid in 91 mm. and you know parents split up um dad went back to the northeast my mom stayed I kind of bounced back and forth in between, in between here and there. I, I counted it up one day. I think I went to like seven or eight different schools, something like that. We moved, we moved a lot. And sometimes uh, that's an advantage, though. You know, like I grew up, I just stayed in the same schools, and I felt kind of sheltered. But you know, that probably takes gets you to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, you make friends quick, right? Yeah. And. Uh, you know, you, you never meet a stranger, I guess. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it, you know, I think it helped form, you know, how, how I approach people and, um, it was very formative. Um, but yeah, so we kind of bounced back and forth and then through high school. Um, and then after high school, I went back to, I went back to Maine for a couple of years, um, just to surf and, and work. My, my father's a carpenter and, I worked under him, you know, just banging nails, making sawdust, <clears throat> framing houses, all kinds of different stuff. And eventually came back, came back here. Um, I got married uh, to my high school sweetheart <clears throat> and uh, we had two kids and yeah, it's, it's good. You know, it's a good, it all is good. That's what matters. You find peace after a lot of that upheaval, I'm sure after so many years. So you probably just really want to stay in one place. I would imagine you just want to be grounded. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's weird. I love, I, I feel like I've that, that gypsy bug bit me at some point and I love traveling. I love touring. Um, you know, it's bittersweet, right? I have kids, I have a wife, uh, we all do. And so it's like, yeah. you know, you, you the guilt cloud kind of hangs over you when you go out on the road and, and things like that. But um, no, I like it. It's all a good balance. Yeah. That's nice. That's really nice. So growing up, uh, how did you fall in love with music? Music, so as far, yeah, I mean, my whole family really plays, at least on my dad's side. Um, you know, my, my brothers play, my, my brother, my older brother's a phenomenal bass player. Um, you know, my brothers play, my cousins play, my dad plays, my grandfather played, my grandfather was a jazz musician. And um, so it's just, you know, it's one of those things we just, we grew up doing it. You know, there was always guitars around the house. Um, you know, my dad at one point had a, had a small, you know, studio in his, in his wood shop, you know, drums and guitars and all that stuff, you know, and you spend enough time in the woods and you, you know, it's, it's, it's like the, the old saying, you know, you hang out in a barber shop long enough, you're bound to get a haircut, right? Oh yeah. 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 So, exactly. you know, you're hanging out in the woods with really nothing to do with all these instruments around. It really was a way to pass the time. That's so cool. So what, what kind of music were you uh, playing and uh, instruments that you got involved with? Did you just uh, teach yourself, get any lessons? I, I started with drums. I started with drums when I was really young. I was probably six or seven. And right. I mean, that's the go-to, right? It's, you know, it's how you get all your, your energy out. Um, but yeah, I started with drums and I, I picked up the guitar probably when I was, when I was 12 or so. And um you know, that, that, that's my, really my first love, uh, you know, I, I love playing drums. Um, but I think, at, at, you know, in my heart of hearts, I'm a guitar player and a, and a songwriter. Um, but yeah, so, um, so drums playing guitar, um, 
and then you know th that's really you know that's really all I play. I, I dabble in banjo. I I don't I don't claim to be a banjo player, um, but but I can I can fake my way through it. You know, <laughs> how different is banjo from guitar? My sister took up banjo at a young age. How different is that from versus the guitar? I mean, t tuning wise, it's not it's not super different. You know, there's definitely different chord structures on it. Um, I'd say probably the, the most difficult part about playing banjo is your right hand, or if, if you're a right-handed player, is the right hand is, you know, different roles and different picking is, is definitely the most difficult part. I mean, if you can make chords on a guitar, you can make chords on a banjo. It's just that fast picking, obviously, depending on what you're doing, but if you're talking bluegrass, I mean, that's, that's the bread and butter of a banjo right there to me. Yeah. I've seen those bluegrass guys. Yeah. They're, they're just fast. It's just like, fast. Wow, that's got to it hurts the hands. That's got to yeah. be really tough. Yeah. Dude, doing drums. I find that, you know, it's really interesting. I watch like Don Henley. It's like I I think it's amazing to just drum and sing at the same time. That that's got to be an incredible talent to pick up. I wonder how people do that. Yeah, I mean like and I no, it doesn't discredit Don Henley or Phil Collins or any of those guys, but I mean you, you kind of take a look at a lot of what they're doing drum-wise. You know, it's very simple when they're singing, right? You know, they're yeah. not they're not doing any any Neil Pert uh, fills or solos while they're while they're singing. It's very very simple, which which is serves the song um, for what they do. But um, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit more uh, involved with what Neil Pert has done, and right? Something in John Bonham. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> it's, it's incredible Man. listening to some of these guys. Yeah. Yeah, that's really neat. So do you just get back on drum every now and then? You're basically now vocal guitar with what you're doing these days. I I play more drums with my son than I do, <laughs> yeah. you know, anything yeah. musically. Um, it's cool to be able to talk drums with our drummer, you know, when we're when we're writing songs or we're kind of fleshing out parts. It's nice to be able to kind of talk that talk or be able to add input or, you know, approach things like that. Um, but yeah, bro. I spend more time playing drums with with my son than, than anything because he he's he's taken to the drums and uh so yeah I show him rudiments and you know we we bang around it's it's cool. Yeah, kids will do that. They just and it's great with music if you can pick that up very young. That comes, yeah. you could learn things easier when you're younger. Absolutely. He, he's a sponge. <laughs> that's really cool yeah and like you have speaking of phil collins his son was on the last genesis tour yep just wow i saw some of that video and like wow did he pick it up phil collins is lucky he uh got that protege to take the spot absolutely that's really cool so growing up uh in denver you know, in the denver area or were you somewhere else in colorado yeah it was we were kind of always in the denver area yeah there's a lot of talent up there too so um who were you listening to growing up I mean, early on, you know, my my dad listened to a lot of classic rock. Um, he wasn't really a country guy. Um, so, you know, a lot of Billy Joel, Elton John, uh, Allman Brothers, um, you know, all, all the usual suspects, right? Yeah. Um, you know, eventually, as, as I got into my teenage years, I started listening to <clears throat> a lot of like alt country, um, punk rock, you know, some some metal stuff like that and you know as i got older you know I, I started diving into some of the more classic country stuff um some of the more contemporary country stuff and when i i always feel like you need to define contemporary country uh to me contemporary country is is our is a lot of the music that's not on the radio um you know th that's just not my thing um but you know turnpike troubadours randy rogers jason bolin um, you know, Flatland Cavalry, Mike and the Moon Pies, all that, all that good stuff. Um, and then uh, of course the classics, you know, all the, the Willie Whalen, uh, Merle, um, you know, Johnny Paycheck, um, you know, I like all that stuff too. Yeah. You got to seek that all out now. Like you can online, obviously right. through Spotify. It's so segmented now you do these specific searches cause you're not going to get that on the terrestrial or, I mean, you got to really search for it probably on Sirius and places like that. So it's, it's got to be really tough. Yeah, I mean, it's it's out there. You know, you talk a bit about a band like Turnpike Troubadours or Cody Jinx, you know, they're they've done great things for independent artists. And I think they've kicked down a lot of doors. And, um, you know, recently Cody Jinx had announced that he was going to send one of his 
I think it's like a seven year old song. It was off, you know, many albums ago and he's sending it to country radio just as kind of a middle finger to the industry, you know, um, you know, a good song is a good song. And um, I, it would be nice to see more of that stuff, you know, played and, and exposed. Totally. Totally. So uh, when you were growing up and everything, what, uh, what was your first band? Did you start as, with a band or did you go solo? I've, I've played, I've done some, so, some solo stuff. It was never really my scene. Um, I like loud guitars and drums and, and a band and a venue and um, just that environment more. But yeah, uh, you know, we, I played in, you know, punk rock bands and, um, you know, other, I had another kind of country project, maybe 10 years ago now. Um, so yeah, I've just always played, you know, like I, I took a few years off and, it just always felt like something was missing, you know, like that creative outlet. I was still writing songs, but it, like not having that collaboration and um, the camaraderie, you know, of just of just playing music, being in a band. So, yeah, I've just I've just always it's always been a constant in my life is just playing. I, I love it. Very cool. Yeah. So you had a number of bands uh, that led to now it's called the Barlow. The Barlow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you know, some, I'm, you know, I'm in my mid thirties now and, you know, some guys, you know, you know, exactly what they want to do in their twenties, you know, that, and they go and do it. And I was just, I was just kind of always like, I don't want to, I don't think experimental is the right word, but I was just kind of always searching for that thing that I do that, you know, is, is my, you know, my way of expression, but it's just, uh, I think now it's kind of, you know, it's kind of cemented itself like that. This is just how I write. This is, this is what I like to do. It's the the genres that I want to play. It's, I don't know. It's kind of, I feel like it's kind of all led up to this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It really has. So uh, the recording uh, catalog with the Barlow, how long have you all been together and how did, how did you form? We started in, in 2017 and it, we just, we really just started as, we're, we're all, we're all high school buddies. We've all kind of, you know, hung out in the same circles for years. And, um, it just started as like, let's just play some music and have fun, you know, and go, go play some dive bars, play some breweries. And initially we, you know, we just kind of dabbled with it, you know, we just kind of fit it in when we could. And then, you know, as things kind of progressed, we put out some records and, you know, we just, we just started doing it more <laughs> it was just kind of a natural progression really it wasn't you know wasn't by design um but yeah it's 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 good what uh what venues have you played in the in the denver area you basically stayed in that area or did you go throughout the whole state or go beyond there we tour we tour kind of regionally so you know we've done texas new mexico wyoming kansas you know nebraska all the above um but yeah we've played a lot of the venues in in Colorado for sure um we got to run this some after this here interview I'm I'm hitting the road we got shows this weekend in the mountains um but yeah uh that's kind of our stick we just kind of do weekend runs and you all have day jobs you all all married with kids and have day yeah. jobs yeah I mean music's one of those things it's it's nothing until it isn't right yeah you know, financially it's just you you got to feed yourself. You got to, you know, got to feed your family. So that's kind of, that's kind of our approach until, until it isn't, or maybe it won't. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it seems like you're all in, in this new release. want to promote this, your new album, new year, old May, yeah. uh, really, really nice package here. It, it's just, it got some really good originals here. So you now it's really tough to try to promote the originals because people do, there's so many cover bands mm -hmm. and people pay to see the covers. So do you mix in covers when you're performing live at these venues? You got to. I mean, yeah. you're, you're playing two, three, four hour gigs sometimes. And if you just club the crowd over the head with originals for, for that long, it's it's tough. You know, people want to hear songs they know. I've, we've all been there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we try and mix in cover stuff that that is, you know, somewhat well known, but it's stuff that we like, that we like playing that, you know, just kind of goes over well. So yeah, we, we try and mix it up, but we play a lot of original stuff. Yeah. Um, 
So the, the great, great album here. Uh, you got a yeah. banjo fueled song on here called "All My Days." Who's yeah. doing banjo on this? Talking about I did the banjo on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's I always try and like sneak at least a song or two each album with some banjo. I just like doing it. You know, it's it's a change up. So yeah, I did the banjo. A guy by the name Dan uh, did the fiddle out of Nashville, and. Uh, yeah, we always try and, you know, try and add those elements to the album. We don't roll around with a fiddle player. Um, we got a pedal steel player that jumps in sometimes. Um, but yeah, I mean, typically it's just the four of us. And, you know, I think live, we probably lean into the rock and roll side, you know, Southern rock, you know, side of things a little, little more than, than the record. But um, I think it's cool. You know, we're still true to the album, but it's, it's still different in its own way. Yeah, and this album has a beautiful cover. Who did that? Uh, New guy New by the name of Stony Wayne. Um, he's out of Denton, Texas, and yeah, we we linked up on on social media, and I loved his artwork. And you know, he he, I don't know if he was just kind of getting started with his graphics design stuff, but um, I don't think he had done like a full album package, and he killed it. I mean, he really he he did a great job like i love the artwork now the images on this album cover anybody who's got this uh new year old me it's it's got some uh interesting images on there did you request to have those or you just said here's the idea and he just took went off with that so you know when most people think of colorado they think of the mountains right yeah. so we we kind of what people don't realize about colorado is 50% of the state is mountains, maybe even less. And the rest is just Eastern plains. It's just flat, dry, arid desert, right? Mm -hmm. So that we kind of wanted the Eastern Colorado theme to it. There's a lot of oil field activity, um, you know, just agriculture. It's just kind of wide open space. It's I love that part of Colorado. Like I love the mountains too, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. But I just think the Eastern, I, I feel like it's a place that time hasn't touched so much, you know? That's interesting. You don't even think about Eastern Colorado and how no. much, yeah, it's much more flat agricultural and they're drilling for oil over there. So what yeah. cities are in, in that section of the state? I mean, Denver technically sits in the plains, like it's not in the mountains. So, you know, anything East of that, you know, there's Northeast Colorado, there's Sterling's up there, Pueblo's down South. Um, yeah. But as far as well-known cities, there's not much out there. So it's, you know, when you fly into Denver, the airport's, you know, a half hour east of the city. So it's out in the middle of a field. Huh. If, on a, if it's a cloudy day, you can't even see the mountains. So it's like, I can't imagine how many people fly here and just think, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've had a layover there. I, I thought, oh, maybe I'm getting mixed up with Salt Lake City. Because I remember being in Salt Lake City and seeing a lot of mountainous Absolutely. Area. Not so much Denver. I, I I just had a very quick layover there once. I, a lot of people pass through Denver like they do here in Atlanta. So yeah, it's, big airport. Yeah, yeah, that's very interesting. Wow, beautiful. But yeah, I hear so much th about the beauty in Colorado. I never really got to spend a whole lot of time there. So it's just uh, it's got to be really, really amazing. I'm sure, which has probably inspired probably some of your writing. I'm sure if you have some songs that refer to the mountainous. Mm -hmm region yeah i mean you, you it's in your backyard you take it for granted you know it's yeah. we're, we're we're there all the time either playing shows or big you know i was up there last week weekend vacation with my family and sometimes you do kind of have to remind yourself like it, it is beautiful especially when you go other places and um it is beautiful yeah and you don't think about like you know people really liking country out there but country's loved all over the, this nation sure you don't think about colorado being that you think oh yeah it's the joe walsh song rocky mountain high they're all into that kind of thing but it's country's popular everywhere yeah no i mean colorado's got a good country scene you know we've played with a we played with a lot of national acts here and they you know they do well the, the draws are always good and um we're not you know we're not that far from texas you know it's six six seven hours away or at least western texas um but yeah i mean it, it does well it's it, it's you know it thrives yeah you got a little bit of a, a punk flavor in the title track how did that come about and you uh forming the the title track which obviously is like the theme for the album yeah i mean that was just <clears throat> i just kind of i wanted to make just kind of a quirky song 
um, just, you know, the, the, that whole, you know, songs just kind of, I, you know, kind of said this before, but like, uh, it's, it's kind of aimed at the, the folks that, that never change for better or for worse. Um, yeah, not true. And, <laughs> like, like for me, really? it, you know, there's, it's, it's funny, like, as I get older, there's, and I imagine, you know, you could probably relate to this, but like, there's things that I liked and that I listened to when I was in my teens and my twenties that I still do like not, not even just music, just stuff that I like to do. Um, that's just like never change. Like I just still enjoy doing it. Music being one of them, but you know, other things. Um, and it's, you know, but there's like, the, I also have like, you know, some of those friendships where, you know, they haven't changed and it's kind of for the worst. They're, they're jaded, they're bitter. Um, so it's just that, I don't know, that song was just kind of supposed to be like, just, you know, kind of quirky, like, uh, you know, just, you know, if, you know, if you're the things you enjoy, um, you know, just, just haven't changed and you're just you and it's just your stripes. And, uh, so yeah, uh, it's a cool song. Yeah. So when you're writing lyrics, I always ask this of a lot of, uh, artists, uh, are the words coming first or do you have that melody in your head? Um, both, um, I've, I've started songs with riffs. I've started songs uh, with choruses uh, with a chord chord pattern. Um, I just, I'll, I'll take it any way it comes. Yeah. Yeah. So are you doing most of the writing and arranging or do you have uh, your other band members uh, getting involved with that? I do most of the writing. I try to bring, I try to bring a skeleton of a song to the guys. Cause I always, A, I want their input. But B, I think it's it's important for them to have their skin in the game. So I try not to I try not to bring these finished packages. This is what it is, you know. You know, at, at that point, you're really a singer songwriter, right? You're you're you, then they're your backing band. We're not a band anymore. So you so I like to bring that. You know, hey, I got these. I got the verses. I got the choruses. I might have a bridge or I might have a little riff. But look, let's structure this thing out. You know what's the feel, what's the timing, all that stuff. So like everybody can kind of at least have their, their stake in it, you know? So this album, uh, this was the, uh, the, the genesis of this album was happening when you were on your second effort horseshoe lounge and during, doing that tour. Uh, so you were basically, you know, doing performing live and you were also coming up with this, uh, album so uh, how did, th did that come about through our rehearsals? Yeah, so <clears throat> Horseshoe was made, you know, during COVID. And so the songs were kind of done and we were still kind of picking through, finishing it. We kind of took our time because there was nothing going on. And I started writing more material just because. And so shortly after Horseshoe, we were already playing new songs because we had new material and whatever. And so kind of through all throughout last year, I was, you know, introducing new material and we got towards the end of the year and we had booked some studio time. <clears throat> so we don't, we typically don't rehearse. We just go play. And so we, we actually set up rehearsal for a few weeks just to kind of flesh songs out and determine the timings and like everything we talked about. So just leading up to, up to studio time. And then, yeah, we went in in December and cut the drums cut the bass and I did, I did, I engineered the rest of the guitars and some of the vocals from my house. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. So putting this together, um, did you, uh, you went to a studio called three studios? We went to, we did the drums and the bass at Evergroove, which is in Evergreen, Colorado. And then we, I cut, I cut some of the vocals over at over at a buddy's house just because it's easier to have somebody else run the computer and engineer while I'm just trying to perform. And then all the harmonies, uh, electric guitars, you know, auxiliary stuff, yada, yada, yada. We did all that from from my house, which I like doing because there's no pressure. Right. Oh, yeah. Hey, let's let's spend an hour jacking with this guitar tone and we didn't lose one hundred dollars, you know. Yeah. Or, you know, let's let's try this. Let's try that. And it's it's really just our time. So, um, 
yeah, it was cool. Yeah, and and putting it together, uh, did you have a pretty good mixer? And did you work with files? Did people have to like you know exchange files and things like that to send it in and and mix it all together? Yeah, so at the end we had Evergroove mix it. I, I just it's not my expertise. Right. So yeah, we kick all the files to Brad is his name, and um, yeah, you know, send him all the files. He mixes and masters it, and and that was that. And you know we start with the publicity train and, you know, start doing promo stuff and interviews and all that good stuff to, to, to get it out there, you know? Yeah. So how long has this uh, new effort been out now? It came out June 24th. So yeah. month and a half. Pretty much hot off the presses. So that's yeah. good. Yeah. That's yeah really we're proud good. of it, man. It's, it's a, it's a fun record to play. And, you know, I think, you know, people are listening to it, which is all you want. Right. I mean, you just want people to connect with it. It's all the other stuff's cool, but like at the end of the day, it's just really, and it's, it's always interesting to see like in your mind, you're always like, well, this song's probably, you know, not necessarily a hit, but this might be the, the favorite. And it's always, it's always weird to see like how that shakes out because it never hmm. goes the way you think. Yeah, that's what I, I understand from a lot of artists, though, when they're putting together any kind of a project, they don't know what's going to be the hit. That's the A&R person's uh, responsibility. It's like, you don't pick what's going to be a single and get played. Right. Here's the package. I'm delivering this to the record company. I mean, we're an independent band. We are the A&R, but yeah, exactly. We're like, well, this song will probably be, it's the most catchiest or the one that's going to that's that's gonna catch on the, you know, the most. And it's never that way. It's just yeah. never is. Even if you're doing that all yourself and you're you're yeah. not working for Sony, you're working, you're working for yourself and you're trying to do that. And it's like, it's it's hard to really guess. I mean, you think, oh yeah, this is going to be a real catchy hit. And it's like something else that's, that's more of the hit. Yeah. Like I thought, I thought Josephine was going to be the one. And all my days has really been the one you referred to with the banjo. That's really been the one that's, that's kind of, I'm going to say taken off, but it's done the best, you know, yeah. number wise. And Josephine is real guitar fueled. That really yeah. is a yeah. very strong uh, track on there. So it's like you just don't know. Very true. You have some really interesting tracks on there. Shut it down. What what is the origin behind that? I, I really think that's an incredibly catchy one. Yeah. So that was we actually cut that one on our first record, and we've just been playing it live for so long that it's just mm -hmm. it kind of transformed. And we wanted kind of a second swing at it. So, um, so yeah, we cut it again. That was actually a, our drummer's brother was like, you guys should re recut that song just the way you play it now. And it's more, more Southern rock. But um, I, yeah, I wrote that years ago, back in 18, maybe. Um, yeah. That's really interesting. And you know, again, a lot of artists, the legacy artists do that too. I remember there's an Elton John track called Gray Sale which ended up on Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, but he recorded that long before that. And they finally released that old uh, version of it. But artists do that. They do. They they find new life in something and maybe rearrange it. And then it becomes, you know, something way different, way better, obviously. Man, I think you're talking Elton John, the Live in Australia album, yeah. where he went back and redid a bunch of his his early, early tunes um that's one of my favorite elton records i mean it's just amazing yeah and that's when he was having vocal issues and maybe a year or two or three after that he had gotten the surgery but uh that orchestra that he did that he worked with down there is just incredible i love the sound of that album yeah, yeah it's fantastic and when the wind it had been regurgitated somebody it's so funny because in its an original form in the early 70s it did well and then that live version actually ran up the charts in the 80s. And then he did the Princess Diana version, which was just like, it's amazing how much life he got out of that tune. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the gift that keeps on giving. And it's probably, you know, a goal of every artist is to get to that level. It's just, but that's like striking gold. It's just, yeah. I get so jealous of people like that who could just like keep living off their catalog and uh, regurgitating things. Yep. It's really, really amazing. He's, he's the man. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, I'm going to see him, and it might be for the last time. He's coming here in September next month. So I've seen yeah. him like seven or eight times, yeah. I've seen him too. I saw him with Billy Joel, the face-to-face. -face. Yeah. 
fantastic. Um, I yeah. seen him with seen him with, just with a piano, no band. It was amazing. He's awesome. Yeah, I saw him at a private show he did because he had spent time here in Atlanta. Um, so like a private uh, type, uh, not charity. It was like a, an event where he was talking about AIDS and saw the face to face show in 1994. That was their first one. And they told me people in, the, in that outfit, they practiced here at the old Georgia Dome for cool. that tour. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to see that. Yeah, good artist. Amazing good artist so yeah a lot of good tracks on on your uh new release uh really 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 enjoy it um another one that really gets me is called obsessions mm -hmm. that's a really good deep cut was that yeah, yeah how, how did that come about that one that one i i think i i was kind of you know jacking with the melody on that initially and that one was just you know you know, a Southern rock tune, you know, it's a little bit of riffage in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, that one's just kind of, you know, without, without putting anybody on front street, um, you know, somebody that I know, you know, just kind of always struggled with, with drugs and they're actually, you know, from, they're from the South, but, um, and just like that whole torment of, you know, trying to get out of that. So, um, but it's weird because it kind of dovetails with, with like, you know, like the, the lyric and the, the course of obsessions are, are never satisfied. And it's like, I think that can kind of be, it's kind of true, you know, among a lot of things, right? Like um, playing music, for instance, you know, it's, for me, it's kind of an obsession, like just always chasing another song, um, you know, playing more shows and, um but it, it, it's weird because it's, it's never like satisfied. It's like, it's, it's just this like eternal search. It's like good guitar tone, right? It's just never ending. Um, yeah. yeah. So like, I don't know, that was, that's, it's kind of a weird one, but yeah, it's fun to play. Yeah. So much. Gosh, you do so well here in Georgia. If you could expand beyond Colorado, cause this is all Southern rock. It's very popular still here as much as uh, you, you got, know, you got Blackberry. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah fantastic band hope you could expand beyond uh that region definitely one, one of these days yeah yeah it would be we got a lot of good venues here in atlanta i i just promote that a lot because uh there's just some, so much great talent here and uh they do very very well but you know costs money to travel i'm sure and uh oh man it's brutal right now yeah yeah just getting back so yeah i mean just trying to get out of the whole covid thing how did how was that i mean you obviously didn't perform for a while so that must have felt a little weird trying to get back up on the horrors yeah yeah i mean it always always takes a minute you know you gotta 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 stumble through a few um but you know as far as like you know crowds and um you know venues it it, it sometimes depends on where you're at but um, I'd say overall, you know, it's, it's been pretty good, you know, um, Texas is always good. You know, you play, you play Texas on a Wednesday and it feels like a Friday, you know, <laughs> that that's happened many times. Um, but you know, as far as like Denver and, uh, you know, surrounding States and stuff, like it's all been pretty good. Like we've, you know, people are out, people want to be out, you know, I think, seeing live music and being with other people again and seeing each other's faces and just it's been good. Yeah. People really did this summer really wanted to get out. And there was what they call revenge travel. They just, yeah. just like want to, you know, we're, we're, we're human. We want to get out. We want to have the reactions. So yeah, uh, boy, yeah, it's been very, very rough. I hope we never return to that in anybody's lifetime, not just ours, but agreed. Uh, and somehow some way we've all, been unscathed like playing all these bars and venues none of us have gotten covid good i good. don't know how uh a couple of guys in the band have got it but it wasn't from being on the road um but I, i've yet to get it <laughs> so i don't know i don't know <laughs> well if you're more likely to get it now i would think it would be the ba5 which is a very watered down version because we're not at herd immunity right but I think it would be like, oh, yeah, I got a really, really bad flu. But really, it could be the BA5. It's just uh, it's getting watered down. Hopefully things just keep getting better and better and better. And 
Absolutely. Deal with this. this is, I mean, they were beating the drum about this. It's just been awful. So, I mean, out of that did come some good music people in their lockdown sessions, I'm sure. Yep. Absolutely. Totally. So for your future, what do you plan on doing? Just will this stay as just your weekend gig? Do you have dreams in three, four, five years of making this more full time? Yeah, at some point we'd like to make the leap. It's just timing, you know, um, financials and timing. Um, yeah. So, you know, we've got to it's the music industry, man. It's it's all a crapshoot. It's it's all it's all roulette. So, um you know, just keep doing it is kind of our mentality. Like, let's just keep playing. Let's keep, you know, pushing our music and let's keep having fun. And um, as long as it's, as long as it's still fun and why, why stop doing it? Yeah. So true. So where does the name, the Barlow, this is the obvious question I should have asked at the top, the Barlow, where does that come from? That comes from, so I was living in, I work, I work in the oil field and I was living in a, uh, I was living up in Northeast Colorado a town called Fort Morgan. And there was, we ha I had a buddy staying with us from California and like in, Ca it's kind of a goofy story, but it, in California, you know, when they describe their directions, they're like, they're going to take the 10 to the 20 or whatever their highways, the highways are. Um, whereas here we say, you know, I 70, I 25. Um, so I was just, I was just kind of, you know, razzling him one day. He was going to the store. I'm like, oh yeah, you're going to, you're going to take the 34 over to the Barlow. There was a, there's a Barlow road in that town. And uh, at the time we were looking for a band name and I was just like, it's a cool name. You know, I mean, a lot of people think that it came from the knife. There used to be a knife. Uh, I guess they're pretty sought after knives. Um, but yeah, that's, it's just where they just stuck. And where can we find you on the net? It's uh, the barlowband.com. Yes, sir. Bar barlowband.com. It's the same for uh, same handle for Instagram, Facebook. You know, we're on all the Spotify's and iMusics of the world, Pandora, all that good stuff. Um, you know, YouTube, you know, check out the album there. It's, you know, it's a Google away. And you could buy the album on that website, the barlowband.com. And they got, this is really cool. You got a store, you got a merch tab on there called store. A lot yep. of good stuff on there, the CD and good merch, hats. Vinyl shirts. hats, shirts, uh, all that good stuff. We did, yeah, we did CDs this time. We didn't do CDs on the last record and a lot of people asked for them and they've been selling. I didn't think <laughs> we'd sell them, you know, I didn't, I you know i didn't think it was a thing anymore but people people like them they they want them so that's good to hear to have that physical copy is really nice actually i do have a lot of you know these mp3 files so pretty i'd lose all this stuff but it's great to to have that physical stuff and yeah uh, very how many how many vinyl pressings do you have of this vinyl we, we we ran a hundred um you know we ran a pre-sale and we sold a bunch of them i, I imagine at some point we'll we'll have to order more but I mean, people love vinyl like it. Yeah, it, it's like the, we did a we did a run of 100 on our last our last album and they were gone. Like we thought we really did it for selfish purposes. We you know, none of us, none of the projects we had ever done, we'd press the vinyl. So we're like, let's we had a little extra money. We're like, let's press a vinyl just to have it. Um, and we thought we'd sell like 15 of those things and they're gone. Cool. So. Wow. People like them, you know, especially at shows, you know, we'll, you know, people buy them and we sign them and, you know, it's, it's cool. Yeah. Like you said, it's a package. It's tangible. It's cool. You know? Nice. Nice. Well, get this new uh, CD or LP and great songs on there. My, Mile Marker Blues, another one that really stood out for me. Um, great tracks on her. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, it's been very fun speaking with you this morning and uh, best wishes on everything. Yeah. Thanks, Bob. Thanks for having me. Take care. Take Have care. Bye-bye.